am going to teach chapter 7 separation of mixture of class 6 science now before going to this chapter we can just hint of what is a mixture what is mixture the word mixture came out we know that in this world most of the 80 percent of the compounds or components or anything what we find is mostly of mixtures only about 20 persons to 30 persons are of your substance now whatever the components present in the world is or the materials present in the world is divided into two but one is a pure substance and another one is a mixture now we are going taking the definitions of mixtures we will see what is a mixture a mixture when two or more when two or more substances are mixed together without any chemical reactions we call the result substance of mixture here one point we get that is a chemical reactions why there is no, no chemical reaction it is a natural reactions we do not apply any heat or other uh, materials for this reaction it is about the natural reactions now this mixture since though it is a mixing of two or more materials so we divide this mixture into two parts one is of heterogeneous and another one is a homogeneous here the word hetero means of different mixtures not of the same compounds, of different compounds or different materials. Homogeneous is of same materials. Suppose here we mix sand and clay, mixture of sand and clay or salt and sugar or chini or some different or salt and again uh, sand, this is a heterogeneous. Homogeneous means of the same mixtures that we cannot divide it or we cannot separate it very easily now why we need to separate the, the needs to separate substance whatever substance present in this world needs to be a separations for our needs we are on this world to survive and god has given other materials for our benefits so we cannot consume most of the things we need some separations like a grain a grain on a tree it needs to be separations by tracing or whatever means because we cannot add all together we are not an animal cow do not need separation they eat grains as well as the stalks or the plants together but we human beings do not do we take out only the rice part of it we never take the straw or husk of it we threw away unwanted things so we separate two things which is edible which is a wanted things and we throw it away the unwanted things now the needs to separate substance why we need to separate a substance this is another one question why we need to separate we need to separate to get the useful things. Here in the stalks, here are the grains. Say in the uh, maize tree, we get maize or corns. We do not eat the tree. We need only the useful one, which is edible. That is why we need the separations. Then you move unwanted. Now in the, say this is a, all our salt. It is salt, though it is very small, they may mix unwanted things like stones or other particles to eat to have their benefits, to gain a weight so that they can earn a profit. So then stones is going to eat uneatable. So what do we do? We need to separate that one. That is why we want to remove the unwanted things. Now, in a rice, suppose 
we need to separate unwanted things like chana and all those things because we cannot cook together because chana will be ripen later on than the foods next is to get pure substances now at in a materials also mixer materials also we need to get a pure substances without whatever we do in a experiment that is mostly for to get a pure substances now next we come method of separation to get to get three points that is to get useful substances to remove the unwanted substances and to get the pure substances we need to undergo this method of separations first by difference in size by difference when the, the mixture is of the different sizes the mixture is of different sizes what we do we do a hand pick that means hand pick means say it is a mixture of suppose we bought a chana from the bazaar in the chana or motor or dal there are so many unwanted substances which may be bigger in size or smaller in size so what we do is that we take out the one by one we select and take out the unwanted components that is the process is called hand picking next one is by another one again there is one is by hand picking hand picking number 2 is by in the size we see that number 1 in a small small flour atta flour in the atta flour also some of the residues of the maize or what we call the corn after the flour is being floured in a mill some residues remain they mix with that atta to gain a weight so we need to separate that one which is little bit bigger in size number 2 in that what we do is that we take like this one small uh, what we call bowl type or net type we hold it then we just shake to spring out and the smaller part the small 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 fine flour will fall down and the little bit larger in size will remain on that material in this way also we separate that is called sieving a c i v i n g sieving another one is when you make a tea when you make a tea in a tea you put tea leaves inside a water and it is being boiled after that you put milk that it is mixed and for serving what you do for serving you do not eat the tea leaves you do not eat the tea leaves only you drink the mixture of milk plus water colored by tea that three two things only we drink but that tea leaves unwanted tea leaves what we do we try to remove it by a tea remover pen then all the liquids will fall here tea liquids and the unwanted tea leaves will settle there this is also called a sieving now let's go down <coughs> number 2 points of method of separation that is by difference in weight now by difference in weight we will see that after harvesting of food grains what we do we after harvesting we carry we bring it in home after that we thresh it threshing mean we beat to separate the chair our rice grains with the unwanted that is the chair 
after separation what we do is that in the rice grain after separation what we do is that in the rice grain again two things we find two materials one is the food grains and another one is the one unwanted that is the chair where there is in that food grains cover we do not get any rice so what we do is that to separate that we do one method that is called winnowing that is called winnowing what we do is that we take in one small plates or by just picking up with the hands what we do is that we just throw it up or just we throw it down in accordance with the wind when the wind blows though the unwanted the chair is light since there is no food grains in it it flies away and the wanted that is the grains will fall vertical and the unwanted will fly away so that we can collect the wanted food grains this one also you can see in a video so we will provide you the video you can see that and hope you can understand it from that after that next we will see by difference number 3 point that is by difference in volatile in nature volatile in nature means very very volatile because very so it surrenders quickly to the outer atmosphere that solid particles that means we take that is called that compound is called a sublime that is they change into the gas change into gas directly from the solid substance this solid substance sublimes this solid substance say suppose this is a solid substance a sublime substance made up of ammonium chloride ammonium chloride what we do is that when you put expose in the outside or under the sunlight or sodium chloride sodium chloride this is nothing but the salt what happens when you expose when it gets little air from the external or a moisture it will become little bit weight slowly slowly the weight then sorry then when it gets the heat what will happen a gas will evolve we cannot see with our naked eyes but it will evolve after that what happened this chloride will expose some sunlight then slowly slowly it will become weight weight that means weight means try to form into liquid part then it will go on fissures the gases will fly 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 then after some time you will not find nothing but this place is weight you will not find that so on so this is an example of why difference in volatile in nature now salts are mostly a crystal crystal here are two types of compound we find one is crystal crystal and one is amorphous whatever the salts we consume now it is a crystal crystal has a shape it is a cubic shapes or cuboid shapes or whatever shapes it can form but amorphous is a powder now next the number four points that is for the method of separation that is by difference in magnetic nature so if we say about magnetic nature it is obvious that in that mixture metals will be present so in this again again in this mixture we cannot go with these three types of methods of separations so in this method what we do is that we take take this one here we put some magnets and we it is a roller then we put all the mixtures here then we want maybe to flow on it 
that in floating so the magnetic particles what will do here it will pass here the unwanted thing it will flow away so again this is not a very useful techniques in this what we do the unwanted one also it drifts here and it remains here so in this what we do is that here we try to put here a magnet so the when it falls down here there we distancing some meters from the main magnet what will happen the magnetic things will go attract here then we can separate and unwanted things is falling number 2 what we find in common is that a big magnet is hung up on the rope that the impurities we show it here then slowly slowly we allow the magnet to fall here after that the magnet will attract the magnetic particles then we pull up then the magnetic the materials we select the components which is magnetic the metals we pull it again here then again we allow it to come down from there we separate in this way two times three times on the same radius or in the same part we allow it to do thrice after that we remove this one then we again bring the next one in this way try to separate now this is for the solid particles now we will see the now we will see the in the liquid particles that is separations insoluble solid from a liquid insoluble solid from a liquid that is insoluble means which is not soluble soluble means when we mix a certain liquids powder a solid powder that is crystallines or amorphous and to the liquid particle that the any liquid after mixing stirring and mixing if we see only one particle either the solid or the liquid suppose if we mix salt or sugar to the liquid and we stir it or we heat it what we get is that we see only the liquid we do not see the salt or the sugar again the solid number 2 there is same milk powder when we add to the liquid we do not see the liquid we see the milk color that is the milk powder color so we see only one composition now there is called homogeneous now here what will happen is that in solution that is we do not get either only the liquid or only the solid insoluble solid means this solid particles what we do it flows above or it flows down this is called insoluble solid from liquid now how we separate we will see how we separate this is number 1 point how we separate now let's take one glass or beaker here this is the liquid in this we mix some solid to to the liquid after mixing here if those solid is heavier here what the level it settles now when we do not disturb the liquid if we disturb the liquid it will create a mixture if we do not set uh, mix after mixing if we allow them to set uh, put 
allow uh, we feed them for a minutes without any disturbance what will happen this solid part will settle down and the liquid part will be above the solid and it will be clear there will be no any mixtures so this process is called sedimentation so from there also we can take out the liquid without disturbance this one so to take out the liquid we can pour out the liquid carefully without disturbance of the solid is called decantation so decantations and the this is this is the decantations decanted material this one liquids and this one is called the this one is called a supernatant supernatant the after pouring of the liquids the aqueous type of solid which remains settled down as a glass or the beaker is called a supernatant next we will see the after the number 2 we will say suspended particles from a liquid so suspended particles from a liquid how we separate suspended particles from a liquid now say so this one is a beaker in this we bring the mixture of say clay plus water whatever we pour into the glass after pouring what we do it doesn't settle it just remain as it is because the percentage of it is the percentage of this mixture is not so much of difference so we take a lathi or a small sticks or as alum then we stir it we move it hardly we stir it in this way after stirring what will happen after stirring by this alum the solid particles present in this liquid we will it will drop down then after that we allow them to cool it will settle down by the one force that is created inside that is the torque force called the centrifugal force so what will happen it will settle down here then the liquid will be come from there also we can then we can separate it and it has to be the water has to be poured out quickly if we allow to uh, remain for a minutes after stirring what will happen again it will mix up with the water number 2 now number 3 soluble solid form of liquid soluble this one is insoluble and now this one is called a soluble soluble means already mix with the water say so suppose in this water we take some salt or sugar then we stir it on stir it for making sorbets or any juice then what will happen we cannot take out the water uh, the solid particles from the water and we cannot see it so for this what we do is that we close it with a cover then we heat it we try to evaporate it we try to evaporate it here evaporate is a solution we try to evaporate a solution solution means what in the solution solute plus solvent now that we have solute sugar is the solute and water is the solvent in this this is the mixture after mixing we get a solution that is sugar 
water solution. So after that, we what we do? We evaporate. After evaporations, what will happen? We allow them to make it to evaporate, evaporate. In evaporation, the steam should go off. The water in parts, what will happen? It will fly into the atmosphere. Oxygen and carbon dioxide all on. After that, some parts of hydrogen, though it is heavy, it will start to the glass. In doing so, the water will be dried up. Then, after water is dried up, what we get? We get the salts or sugar dried up here. That one we can again take out and dry it into the sunshine to get the real sugar or the salts. Or here also, if we cool down and make it to dry in the atmosphere, we can get the sugar. So, the process again here, the process is called this is evaporation process. After evaporation, what will happen? The vapor is allowed to go. The solvent can be collected after condensation. After that, you will make it to cool, condense. It will make it to cool down and form here. This is called condensation, condense. Cool down and form. This process is called distillation. Distillation. This process is called distillation. Sometimes we can distill water also. Now, in going through this number 3 or countering this number 3, first we need to know again we need to what is solution. Because here, mostly here, we find only the solution. In this solution, we divide it into two. One is saturated and another one is unsaturated. Saturated and unsaturated. Now, in this saturated and unsaturated, you see, in a solution, this solution is made up of two things, one is solvent and solvent. Here, solute always goes to the solvent to form a mixture. If the solute goes well with the solvent, that means the maximum amount which the solvent can hold or permutes solute can be permutes or induct that is called saturated already filled up you cannot further add more to it to change to its color or any other form next one is in a mixture of solute and solution, solvent, to form a solutions, here yeah, solute has to be mixed, we as we know that solute has to be mixed to the solvent. In this, there are some amounts or some places or some rooms in percentage are left for the solute to be mixed to the solvent, then we call it unsaturated solutions. Now, let's see. We know the saturated and unsaturated. Then we see amorphous and crystalline also. Amorphous means the powdery part of things in a mixture or in a materials or compounds, whatever may be, the crystalline is the solid. Now, separating liquid. Separating separating liquid, number one, immiscible liquids number one is immiscible liquids and number two is miscible that means 
when we find that in a mixer it is very small but it changes it to colors also and we need to separate it then what we do say this one is also oil this one is also liquid both are liquid things if it is in the both are liquid things we need to separate then what will happen we need to in this process in this number one process we can separate the mixture by the process of filtrations by the process of filtrations here here what we do filtrations this is the stem or supporting of the funnel we take top like funnel then small holes then we add the mixture we add the mixture we put here funnel separating funnel then we the mixtures after that what happens here the mixtures we pour it under the separating funnel as uh, sorry filter paper separating funnel then here oil and liquid here when we compare oil and liquid here in this mixture oil and liquid the liquid density is greater than the oil so liquid will always be in the lower part and oil will be in the upper part then we put here one stop cock so that it can exit the you can exit the what do you call Existers. Then we allow it to pour it quick, slowly, slowly, slowly. There will be certain meters also. Here, points meters, centimeter, or millimeter. We find that in these mixtures, the liquid is greater than the, the solid liquid is greater than the oil. Then it will settle down to certain size to the five millimeter. Above that is oil. Then we put here small liquor. Then we allow to fall down, losing this house of cork slowly, drop by drop, drop by drop, slowly, slowly, drop by drop. Then what will happen is that we can see that it has come down to the zero point the liquid. Then we close it. Then we separate the liquid. Next liquor we will put. bring in and we allow the oil to flow down so this is another way of separate next one is miscible say so, this is miscible we have taken for example there is oil plus water oil plus water that till we separate by separating funnel next one is we separate uh, that one is the uh, immiscible this one is we do by distillations fractional distillations so for immiscible we take alcohol plus liquid according to your books this can be done only if the liquid have parts one is we separate in accordance with the density next one is we separate in accordance with the boiling points alcohol has a lower boiling points than water the boiling boiling points of alcohol is lower than the boiling points of water the vapor of the alcohol rise flow through the condensers and get collected since the boiling point of alcohol is less so what happen though it is less the vapor of alcohol rise flow through the condenser you can see in your 
book also the methods it is drawn here and there is also an explain in the book and get collected water with higher boiling plants remain in the flux water can be pu uh, purified using distillation the method is used in countries like middle east countries for drinking water that is the salt water saline water and it is used in the medicines also for manufacturing uh, separations of medicines for injections and it is carried out in laboratories separation of substances most of the things around us like air sea water soil rock milk and paint are mixtures sea water is a mixture of salts dissolved in water milk is a mixture of cream or butter and water a mixture is a substance that contains two or more pure substances mixed together in varying proportions the substances components present in the mixture do not lose their identity these components can usually be separated by simple physical methods milk or curd is churned to separate the butter from the water common salt that is used in our kitchen is prepared from sea water by separating salt from water let us study the need of separation of substances from their mixture need for separation of substances in a mixture to remove undesirable substances tea is made by boiling tea leaves in water and then adding sugar and milk after the tea has been made used tea leaves are an undesirable component of the mixture we separate it by using a filter called tea strainer before eating a banana we peel off its skin undesirable component to obtain useful components crude petroleum is a mixture of various components such as petrol diesel kerosene and petroleum gas we separate the petroleum mixture to obtain these useful components kerosene is used as a household fuel whereas petrol and diesel are used as fuels in vehicles to remove harmful substances we buy wheat rice and pulses from the market these food grains usually contain small pieces of stones and insects these pieces of stones and insects are harmful to us so we separate them from wheat rice and pulses before using them methods of separation when we want to separate a component of a mixture we should first find out some of its properties that would be different from the remaining components of the mixture let us study the simple methods of separating substances that are mixed together you may come across some of these methods being used in day to day activities separation of insoluble solids from a mixture hand picking the grains and pulses that we buy from the market may contain undesirable components like small stones these components look very different from the food grains they are of different sizes and colors so these can be spotted easily such undesirable components can be removed by hand picking hand picking means to take out by hand it is a convenient method of separation only when the size shape or color of the unwanted substance is different from that of the useful one the quantity of the mixture is small and the unwanted substance is present in smaller quantities threshing cereals like wheat and rice are a source of food for us after harvesting these food crops the grains need to be separated from the rest of the plant this is done by the process of threshing the process of separating the grains from the rest of the plant is called threshing it is done in the following ways 
In manual threshing, the farmer holds a pile of crop in his hand and hits it against a rock or any hard surface. During this process, the grains separate from the plant. Threshing can be done by a machine called thresher. This machine is used for threshing large quantities. Threshing can also be done by combine harvester. Winnowing After threshing, a farmer gets a mixture of grains, wheat, rice and husk. Now, before grains can be used, husk, undesirable component, has to be removed from them. This is done by using the property that grains are heavier than husk. The lighter husk particles are separated from the heavier grains by the method of winnowing. In this process, the farmer takes a mixture of wheat grains and husk in a winnowing basket. He stands at a higher platform from the ground and allows the mixture to fall down from a height by shaking the winnowing basket continuously. The wheat grains being heavy fall down vertically on the ground and form a heap. The husk particles being lighter are carried away by the wind so the husk forms a separate heap a small distance away from the heap of wheat grains. In this way husk gets separated from the wheat grains. The method of separating heavier and lighter components of a mixture by wind or by blowing air is called winnowing, sieving. When the components of a mixture have particles of different sizes, a sieve can be used to separate them. A sieve is a shallow vessel that has small holes at its bottom. The size of the holes in the sieve depend on the size of the components to be separated. The method of separating the components of a mixture that are of different sizes by using a sieve is called sieving. I hope you have all understood what we have studied together today. So we will next class we will do the next chapters. Thank you. Stay home. Stay safe. Do it for self. Do it for your family. Do it for India. Let's break the chain of COVID-19. Hum hoge kamyab jai Hind. Hum hoge kamyab jai Hind. Hum hoge kamyab jai Hind.